The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 10-1A. This is us preparing uh, some journal entries related to shareholders equity, as well as a statement of changes in equity. So let's have a look. The December 31st, 2023 shareholders equity section of Bossman Inc.'s balance sheet is shown below. So you can see they've got preferred shares. Now $10 means that's the sort of promised dividend and it's promised annually, but you'll notice it's non-cumulative. That means if they forget to pay it or they're not, uh, not that they'd forget, but they're unable to pay it or don't pay it in one year, it doesn't carry over to the next. They don't have to pay 20 the next year. Because 10 has to be paid in any year before they pay the common shareholders anything. That's what that non-cumulative means. 500 shares are issued, $50,000 in shareholders equity. So you can do the math and say, oh, that's $100 each, right? $50,000 divided by 500 means the shares were issued at $100 each. Common shares, 20,000 issued, uh, $200,000 in equity. So again, you can do the math and say that's $10 each is what the common shares were issued for. Retained earnings, 750 grand, and you can see there's a million dollars in equity. The following equity transactions occurred during 2024, and there's a big list of them, and we're going to have to do journal entries. So let's just go through them one at a time. Let's start with our January 31st entry. January 31st, it says, issued 5,000 common shares for $12 each. Now, you'll notice that's more than we had issued these previously for. 20,000 issued $200,000. We're $10 each. This is $12 each. That the fact that they were less or more in the past doesn't really matter for our journal entry here. Uh, when we issue common shares, we expect to receive cash. Unless it tells us otherwise, you can assume we got cash on the deal. 5,000 times 12 is $60,000 in cash. The credit here, well, what did we issue? We issued common shares. Our shareholders' equity is increasing, so debit cash credit common shares. This is very much like a chapter two, I believe, transaction. If you go back to mod two of this course, we issued common shares in a lot of those questions. Okay. May 14th, it starts to get a little bit more unusual. May 14th, we issue 100 preferred shares in exchange for equipment. So, okay. All right. It's not common. It's preferred. And we don't get uh, uh, cash. We get equipment with a fair value of $90,000. So we're going to debit equipment because that's what we got. It's an asset going up, $90,000. And we credit preferred shares. So this is just to kind of illustrate the point that when you issue shares, be they common or preferred, usually, I mean, really 90 plus percent of the time, it's going to be for cash. But it can also be for other assets, right? And we just say, okay, well, the value of the shares we issued is the same as the value of the asset. Doesn't matter the number of shares again here. It's all about the dollar value of the asset being exchanged. July 1st, declared the regular cash dividend on preferred shares. And this is interesting. On July 15th, we pay. So this is something we haven't dealt with before, but we, this is more typical of a, a dividend transaction. We've sort of said declared and paid happens all at once. Here they declare it on one day, so they're promising and legally obligating themselves to pay a dividend. And then a couple weeks later on July 15th, they pay it. So let's get to it. The regular cash dividend on preferred shares. Well, it's $10 per share and we have 500 shares issued, but we just issued 100 more. So we have 600 shares out there. Again, we have 500 plus the 100 we just issued, that's 600 preferred shares outstanding. So we pay a $10 dividend on every one, 600 times 10. That's the math here on July the 1st. So again, it's 600 preferred shares times 
$10 per share, it's $6,000 worth of dividends that are being promised. I'm going to debit. Now there's many different accounts one might call this. I'm going to debit an account called Preferred Dividends. Uh, commonly, we might call it just dividends. I, I think it's good to distinguish, but on financial statements, it's likely going to get lumped in with dividends. You do see people debit retained earnings here as well. Uh, going back to chapter three, dividends get shifted into retained earnings. So commonly when dividends are paid, people don't even debit a dividends account because they know it's going to retained earnings anyway. They just debit retained earnings. I like to keep it separated, particularly as we're learning. So debit preferred dividends, credit preferred dividends, payable, right? We're going to be paying these. We haven't paid them yet. Okay, so that was July the 1st. July the 15th, paid the dividend. Okay, so this is just paying a payable, right? We sort of said, we've declared the dividend, it is payable, now we're gonna pay it. Credit cash, $6,000. Debit, preferred. Dividends, payable. Because they're not payable anymore, they have been paid. Okay. Last one, August 7th. August 7th, declared and issued a 20% stock dividend on common shares at a time when the market price was $13 per share. Okay, so let's deal with our common shares and figure out how many we have. Now, what is a stock dividend? It's what it sounds like. We're giving a dividend, but we're not paying money. We're just giving them new shares. We're issuing new shares to our, share, our existing shareholders. So I'm just gonna highlight a few things. We had 20,000 shares outstanding. We're adding to it 5,000 more shares. So I have 25,000 total shares outstanding, and now I'm declaring a 20% stock dividend. So I have 25,000 shares times 20%, 25,000 times 20% is 5,000 new shares being issued. Now the market price of those is 5,000 times $13 that's $65,000 worth of new shares in the world. So let's issue the shares. That's what's happening on August the 7th. Uh, credit common shares. And the amount was uh, $65,000. And our debit here is to stock dividends. Sixty-five thousand bucks, and there we have it. We have done all of our journal entries. Um. Okay. So part B says, prepare a statement of changes in equity. So let's do it. It's a three-line title, and it's for the the following year. So it's going to be December thirty-first, twenty twenty-four. The name of the company is Bossman Inc. So let's get at it. So the name of our company. Boss Man Inc. We are preparing a statement of changes in equity. And this is for the year ended December 31st, 2024. So what are we trying to do here? We're just going to say, what are our equity accounts? And our equity accounts are preferred shares, common shares, and retained earnings. So we'll list those out. We're gonna say, what did they begin with and how did they change? So our beginning balance, our January 1st, 2024 balances are just gonna come from the very start of the question. This was our December 31st, 2023. That's the same as January 1st, 2024. So we'll use those numbers, 50,000, 200,000, 750,000, 50,000, 200,000 and 750,000. There's a million dollars in total shareholders equity out there during the year. So I was 
like to try to go from left to right when I can. So I'll start with the preferred chairs column. I'll say, hey, were any preferred chairs issued? The answer here is yes, we had preferred chairs issued. Uh, how many dollars worth of preferred chairs got issued? And the answer is, where is it? Right there, $90,000 of new preferred chairs. So let's add that. Uh, preferred shares issued. And it was 90,000 bucks. That's the only thing that affected our preferred shareholders equity. Now we'll look at common. Did we issue any common shares? And the answer is yes. We issued $60,000 worth of common shares on January 31st. So let's plug that in. Uh, I guess I can put my totals as well. 90,000 was our total preferred shares issued. 60,000 was our total common shares issued. Now we issued more common shares with our stock dividend. So I'm gonna actually note that as well. My stock dividend, when I did that, I issued 65,000 new common shares into the world, $65,000 worth of new common shares into the world. Now, interestingly, we issue common shares, but it also hurts our retained earnings because we're paying a dividend. When you pay a dividend, it reduces your retained earnings. So we'll deduct 65,000 there. So the net effect here is actually zero. And that's the way of stock dividends as well as stock splits. There's just a net effect here of zero. Stock splits is a zero impact thing, but a stock dividend, it doesn't affect the company's shareholders equity at all. And it's seen as a weird kind of liquidative move. Like for example, if I have the exact same company, I say, okay, everybody gets a hundred more shares. Nobody should be any richer for my having done that, right? The company is no more valuable. Everybody owns the exact same percentage. They just have a few more shares. Just their, the value of an individual share should drop uh, is the, the sort of theory here. And it's, it's pretty true. Um, okay. Uh, what else do I need to do? Uh, did I have any other dividends? And yes, I had the preferred dividend of $6,000. So let's put that in here. Preferred dividends, uh, 6,000, that hurts my retained earnings. Did anything else hit retained earnings? The answer is, well, I'm always like beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends. I haven't plused net income yet. And uh, I, I didn't really read this thoroughly, but it says assuming net income for the year was 125, prepare your statement of cha changes in equity. Uh, so assuming net income of 125, we're gonna add net income of 125. And at this point, folks, we're done. So we just need totals across the board to get our December 31st, 2024 balances. So 50 plus 90, 140, 20, 200 plus 60 plus 65, 325, 750 minus 65 minus six plus 125 is 804. And summing the three across the bottom, 140 plus 325 plus 804 is 1269. Double underlines under each of these. Dollar signs at the top of each column, uh, not beside the words, beside the numbers at the top of each column. Dollar signs beside the bottom line as well. And there we have it. We have completed our statement of changes in equity for Bossman Inc. We've also done all the relevant journal entries. We are done 10-1-A. And as I often say, if you did make it to the end of the video, I would love a like. All right. Hope this helped. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.